إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آل بيته وصحابته الطيبين الطاهرين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين Dear brothers and sisters as always, we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him and we thank Him and we seek His assistance and we seek His forgiveness. And we bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except for Allah alone. And we bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is His final messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran by saying, Ya ayyuha nasu taqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisaa وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا O humanity, be fully mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who has created you from a single soul, and that is Adam. And from him, Allah has created his wife for him, and that is Hawa alayhi salam. And from them both, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given creation to multitudes of men and women. And be mindful of Allah. The one in whose name you seek your mutual rights and obligations and fulfill the duties of family. Surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever watchful over you. We are told by one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that one day Sa'ad al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ila min barihi sharif wa qala ameen ma'ad darajat al-ula ثم قال آمين في الدرجة الثانية ثم قال آمين في الدرجة الثالثة فتعجب أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وسألوه ما هذا التأمين فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم أتاني جبريل وقال رغم أنف امرئ أدرك والديه أو أحدهما ولم يغفر له فقلت آمين وقال جبريل رغما في امرئ ذكرت عنده أي رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم فلم يصل عليك فقلت آمين ثم قال رغما في امرئ أدرك رمضان ولم يغفر له فقلت آمين رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم was getting on to his member and with the first step he took he said آمين then with the second one he said آمين and the third one he said آمين so the companions were surprised what is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying ameen to? Then he explained to them that Jibreel has come to me and he has promised destruction or loss for somebody who reaches or is allowed the chance to live with his parents or one of them and is not forgiven because of his good deeds to them. And similarly, may loss and destruction be given to somebody who the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mentioned in front of and this person doesn't say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and thirdly may loss and destruction be given to somebody who reaches the month of Ramadan and is not forgiven in this month Dear brothers and sisters we are currently in the month of Rajab and Ramadan is our around 50 days away from us and some of us may ask isn't it too early to be talking about Ramadan right now we still have a long time to go 50 days approximately that's almost two months but the truth of the matter dear brothers and sisters is that we know from the attitude of the Salaf al-Salih those pious predecessors that came before us that they used to welcome Ramadan six months in advance and in fact, once Ramadan completes, for months they go on asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept their deeds from Ramadan, the one that has passed. So you can see that the life cycle of these people, righteous people, revolves around the month of Ramadan. Because they understood what Ramadan is like. Dear brothers and sisters, if some of us are students and we go to university and we have exams, we know we are working hard the whole entire semester in order to ace the final exams, to do well in schools. Somebody who's playing around from the beginning of the semester, you can almost guarantee that they will not do well. And as, as exam season comes closer, 
you know, they beef up all the efforts that they have because they know they have this chance. And if they waste it, then they have to repeat this term or the subject. Going into tax season, you know how accountants, how busy they are and how they urge people, get all of your papers together, come see us as soon as you can. And even here you see people leading up the way for Christmas, for example, to be with the family, the festivities, the gathering, the gifts, the buying, all of that. When does it start? It starts near the end of October. So people always give themselves room and chance to prepare for important things in their lives. And similarly, actually more importantly, we should be doing the same and more when it comes to Ramadan. Because this is the season like no other. This is the month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed the Quran in. This is the season where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the, another chance or another type of worship and that is fasting and that we must take part in. Unlike fasting throughout the year which is voluntarily. So we see that we need to prepare for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dear brothers and sisters, Describe some of the qualities of the hypocrites. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. He says, وَلَوْ أَرَادُوا الْخُرُوجَ لَأَعَدُّوا لَهُ عُدَّةِ وَلَكِنْ كَرِهَ اللَّهُ بِعَاثَهُمْ فَثَبَّطَهُمْ وَقِيلَ قُعُدُوا مَعَ الْقَاعِدِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing some of the hypocrites that when Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered them to come and join to defend the honor and the dignity of Islam and Muslims, they were not forthcoming. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that if they were forthcoming, that they would have prepared for it. That they would have prepared for it. وَلَوْ أَرَادُوا الْخُرُوجِ In fact, if they had the intention of wanting to go out to defend Allah and His cause, they would have prepared. وَلَوْ أَرَادُوا الْخُرُوجَ لَا عَدُّوا لَهُ عُدَّةِ وَلَكِنْ كَرِيهَ اللَّهُمْ بِعَاثَهُمْ فَثَبَّطَهُمْ But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not like for them to come out and join the Prophet ﷺ because they were hypocrites. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused them further delay. وَقِيلَ قُعُدُوا مَعَ الْقَاعِدِينَ And it was told to them, stay and remain behind with those who are legally excused from not joining the battle. And in fact, the Prophet ﷺ tells us in another hadith, he noticed that some of his companions, when they would come to the masjid, they would not come forth to the first lines. They would hang around in the, in the middle or in the back. Where his teaching was is to come forth. Qala Rasulullah ﷺ to his companions who were showing this attitude. He says, Taqaddamu wa'tammu bi. تَقَدَّمُوا وَأْتَمُّوا بِي وَلْيَأْتَمَّ بِكُمْ مَنْ جَاءَ بَعْدَكُمْ لَا يَزَالُ قَوْمٌ يَتَأَخَّرُونَ حَتَّى يُؤَخِّرُهُمُ اللَّهِ حَتَّى يُؤَخِّرَهُمُ اللَّهِ Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told them, come forth, come to the first lines. Make sure that you pray behind me, I am your leader, so that those who come either behind you or after you take you as leaders. And then Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there is, there will continue to be or you will find a group of people that intentionally always delay themselves from doing righteous, good acts. And as a result, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause them to remain behind. And this is a scary hadith, dear brothers and sisters. We should have the attitude of the true believers, of the Muslims who have this musara and musabaqa. Go in haste, go quickly when we are called to do good things. And with the month of Ramadan coming around, dear brothers and sisters, we should be prepared for that. And look at another hadith in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam quotes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hadith Qudsi, in where he says, مَنْ تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ شِبْرًا تَقَرَّبْتُ إِلَيْهِ ذِرَاعًا وَمَنْ تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ ذِرَاعًا تَقَرَّبْتُ إِلَيْهِ بَاعًا أَوْ بُوعًا وَمَنْ أَتَانِي مَشْيًا أَتَيْتُهُ هَرْوَلا Look how loving and compassionate and welcoming Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. He tells us just to come forward, to show Allah the best of intentions, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you even more. He says, if my servant wishes to come to me, shibran, just the length 
of a hand span, I will come to him, a cupid span, meaning like a whole arm up to the elbows. And if a person was to come to me, this distance of a cubit, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come towards him, the length of two arms widespread. And whomsoever comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala walking, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to him in haste. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The most merciful, the most compassionate, the most kind, the most generous. He wants to see any effort on your part. And he will not only reciprocate that, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you more and more. So here is an opportunity. Here is a season to do good, to fix a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to improve as human beings. So dear brothers and sisters, make a commitment that you will prepare for Ramadan from early on, right now. Like I said, some people think it's early, but in fact, by the standards of the righteous predecessors, it may be even too late. عباد الله أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله العلي العظيم لي ولكم لساء المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على عباد والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله عباد الله يقول الله عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما Dear brothers and sisters the mother of the believers Lady Aisha رضي الله عنها وأرضاها tells us in a hadith that he, she has never seen the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم fast more than any month other than Ramadan like he would fast in Sha'ban and we know that Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم used to fast all year round. And he told and he taught the companions to fast on Mondays and Thursdays and to fast the three middle days of the lunar month. But then, so he's used to fasting the whole time. And if he, sallallahu alayhi wasallam was not fasting, rest assured that he was not eating much. He would go by eating very little. But when Sha'ban came, and it was that last 30 days, last four weeks before Ramadan, even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself would fast even more to prepare for him to prepare, prepare himself physically and mentally and spiritually for that. And if Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam does that, what does that tell you about us? We keep delaying, delaying, denying, and then checking the internet and calling friends and whatnot. Is tomorrow Ramadan? Is not tomorrow not Ramadan? Is it Ramadan? Is not Ramadan? And then bam, the next day, you wake up with a headache because of the caffeine withdrawal. It's only 30 days. Ayyam and ma'dudat. We should not be doing the effort to improve in Ramadan. But rather, we should be taking steps. So in when Ramadan comes, we're actually performing at high capacity and high efficiency. But when we start in Ramadan, it's already too late. The first couple of days, maybe even week, you know, you're still having headaches, you're still having migraines, you're not having all of that caffeine or sugar that you are used to, and hence you start late. And then when you're not prepared, what happens? You overeat, you overspend time on not effectively, and all of these things happen. But if we take it as a point to prepare as soon as we can, and we have a game plan on how we go to Ramadan, how we approach our prayers, how we approach Quran, how we approach fasting itself, then Ramadan would be an opportunity for us that sees the fruit. Dear brothers and sisters, it is narrated that one of the pious predecessors said, you know, I used to work hard at myself for 20 years in order to perform Qiyamul Layl. Salat al-Layl. It was very hard on me for 20 years. Look how the real people, the truthful people, how hard they go. And their sincerity and their truthfulness. But then for the next 20 years, I enjoyed, I tasted the beauty and the sweetness of this Qiyamul Layl. Nothing comes easy. If we want to taste sweetness and beauty of a Quran recitation and fasting and all of that, it doesn't just come. 
We have to prepare for it. So it goes without saying that we must do our best now and have a plan. Sit down with yourself, write some things down, and all in accordance to what you can do, dear brothers and sisters. We are not equal. Some of us have more time, less time, more responsibility, all of this. That's not important. What's important is that you are truthful. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu taqullaha wa kunu ma'a sadiqeen. Be truthful with Allah. And Allah knows you cannot make excuses and run away from responsibility with Allah. If you have a certain capacity, then Allah knows. So do in accordance to what you, your best. Don't look at other people, how much they're praying, how much they're giving, how much they're reciting Quran. Judge your own self by your own conditions. Push yourself a little, but don't either go, you know, all out or nothing. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu taqullah wa kunu ma'a sadiqeen. And another hadith the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, even though the authenticity of the hadith may be questioned, but the meaning is correct. Sabaqa dirhamun mi'ata alfi dirhamin. Qalu kayfa ya Rasulullah. He said, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, perhaps one dollar will come ahead or in front of a hundred thousand dollars. They said, how is this possible, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said, perhaps this one dollar is given by somebody who only has two dollars. And the hundred thousand dollars is given by somebody who has millions. And this hundred thousand dollars is nothing to them. So dear brothers and sisters, the game plan is sincerity, is truthfulness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the ethics. These are the principles that we need to base our actions on. And then we have an actual plan. And then we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us. It has been said that Rajab, the current month, is the month of putting the seed on the ground. And Sha'ban is the month of watering that seed. And Ramadan is the month where we reap out the fruits, enjoy the fruits, and eat and enjoy. Nothing comes easy. And this chance, this season, of forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of being freed from the hellfire, of getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This opportunity of a spiritual boot camp, if you will, it's a retreat for the heart. It's a journey that will last with us 29 or 30 days, and it's a journey of body, mind, and soul. So I urge you, dear brothers and sisters, please take a few minutes from your time right now and plan out what we wish to be the best experience of our lives, dear brothers and sisters. It is not guaranteed that we will live another Ramadan. In fact, it's not even guaranteed that we reach this month of Ramadan. But you do your plan. You are sincere. You are truthful. And you depend on Allah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an yubarika lana fi rajab wa sha'ban wa an yuballighana Ramadan. Ibad Allah, inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على حبيبنا وقائدنا وقدوتنا محمد بن عبد الله الصادق الأمين وعلى صحابته الطيبين الطاهرين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا واعف عنا اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا واعف عنا اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا واعف عنا اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا واقض ديوننا وانصرنا على من ظلمنا وخذ بحقوقنا ممن عادانا اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذل من خذل المسلمين اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذل من خذل المسلمين ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله العلي العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة